I thank you, John. We, we kind of always work in concert of what the message is, what the music is, and uh, so uh, we are blessed that the grace of God has appeared to all men and it teaches us to say no to ungodliness in the present evil age that we're living in right now as we wait for that blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior. Jesus Christ, who's, who's excited about Jesus coming again, amen? And uh, it's a bittersweet uh, thing, and what I mean by that is because some are not ready. And uh, so uh, the work of the church is continued to make the gospel, to share the goodness of, of the Lord, that uh, we reach out to, to a world that uh, in some sense has turned their back on the Lord. And God just loves the world. He, uh, doesn't want anyone to perish. And um, today I took the passage of scripture from 2 Peter in chapter 3, and uh, I titled the message, uh, Global Warming. <laughs> and uh, what I mean by global warming is, uh, I could say global warning also. As you look at the world, it seems to be on fire. Uh, it seems that we're shaking and quaking in every avenue and every place uh, across the globe right now. And uh, my heart goes out to what's happening in Ukraine. Uh, and my heart goes out to those in, in Russia because uh, I'm sure that everyone in Russia doesn't like what the tyrant is doing or what's happening there. And, and they're just caught in this, uh, you know, they're in a rock and a hard place. So we want to pray for them also. Um, so we, we're trusting uh, God to work these things out. Um, God's plan has always uh, shown us that these things would transpire and they give us an indication of where we're at on an on a, uh, eschatology timeline of where uh, we're at. No one knows the day or the hour when the Lord's going to return, but we do know that things are getting close. We do know that uh, when the, the scriptures say that these signs will be given, there'll be wars and rumors of wars, there'll be earthquakes, famines, pestilence throughout the earth. Uh, but he said, but don't, don't get overwhelmed with those things because the end is still yet to come. And so what does that give us? That gives us the opportunity uh, today, as long as we have breath, to continue to proclamate this gospel, the goodness of God. And what is the goodness of God? Uh, Jesus died for our sins. Each one of us have fallen short of God's glory, and uh, He doesn't count our sins against us. He doesn't judge us uh, on what we have done if we trust Him as Lord and Savior. Isn't that a wonderful thing? That your whole uh, past existence from this moment on, if you just trust Jesus as your Lord and Savior, gets wiped away. Hallelujah. And you get a new beginning. That the Bible tells us that we become a new creation in Christ Jesus. And the old is gone and the new is coming. And not only about you, but that's so inviting uh, for someone who had a past. That's so inviting that God's grace that he lavished on me in such a, a wonderful way. He was not saying, it's not all the things that you've done is what I've done for you, my child. And, and I receive that and I love that and I walk with him and I love him for that today. Uh, for what he's done for me. Peter, he, he's writing to a church that is persecuted. He's writing probably around A.D. 62 uh, to 64. Uh, some of you heard of the emperor Nero. Nero was a, a real tyrant. Uh, and uh, he was, uh, what if you know the history, uh, Nero had uh, set Rome on fire and blamed the Christians. You know, and so the Christians got a bad deal and they were kind of getting persecuted and uh, they were scattered. And, uh, so Peter is writing in that era about how to stay faithful, how to remain uh, faithful to the Lord under persecution, under a time of trial. And how many know that we're, we all go through trials in life, amen? And, and sometimes uh, we start doubting this thing. That's why you hear me, it's so important that you're in this that this is a guide, this is your, your light unto your feet, this is God's inherent word, uh, that when we follow this and we know this and we apply this, uh, we can know with an assurance that uh, God's timetable, God's word is true. Uh, all through history we find uh, 
that through the scripture time and time again that this has been proven right. And so aren't you glad that you have something you can rely on? And, and what a wonderful thing. As a matter of fact, uh, Peter addresses that. Peter, if you remember Peter, he was the one who always put his foot in his mouth, but he was the one that saw Jesus, him and John and James went up to the Mount Transfiguration, and they saw Jesus transform, and the glory of God came upon Jesus, and, and God spoke from heaven, and Peter and uh, John and James heard this. But what Peter writes in here, he says, even though that we saw that, he said, the words of the prophet are made more sure. He says that this word was greater than seeing the miracle of Jesus being glorified. That's what he said. So this is more reliable, he's saying, than sometimes. You know how people go around and say, I want to see this, I want to see that. I'm waiting for this sign, I'm waiting for that. And we'll know, you know, maybe Israel's going to be getting surrounded. And, you know, the day is coming and then maybe I'll get right with the Lord. I'm telling you because the word is telling us we need to get right with the Lord now. Amen. You see, don't wait for these signs of wars and rumors of wars and things and pestilence because you know what? The Bible says that we don't know the day or the hour that Jesus is coming like a thief in the night. And when does a thief in the night come? A, a, a thief uh, doesn't advertise it or call out and say, I'm going to be there tomorrow. No, he comes when, when we're on when, when we're not really on guard. Matter of fact, the scripture says this, like even in the days of Noah, people were marrying and giving in marriage. Right up to the day that Noah entered the ark. So things were going on, you know. People were, you know, looking at their 401ks and the stock market and, and things were going and were watching them rise. And then the day came and no one was prepared for it. If we know history and the scripture and to do, believe it, that's true that there wasn't very many. Matter of fact, the scripture says only eight in all. But there wasn't many that weren't prepared. Think of that. Think of it today. Uh, you know, are you prepared? Are you prepared to meet thy God? You see, you may say, well, you know, what do I got to do? I got to get it washed up, get the right suit on. But it has nothing to do with that. It's trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You see? And as we trust Him, we trust His Word and what His Word declares. So we're going to get into that. And I'd like to read some of it. And uh, 2 Peter chapter 3. We're probably not going to get through it all. Um, but why do you title this global warming well the bible talks about that in the past god uh, sent a deluge he sent the waters by the waters to uh, uh re to to purge the earth in a sense he says he's not going to do that by water again but he's going to be doing it by fire doing it by fire so what what does that mean you know the scholars they they look is, the, is this earth going to be destroyed and just evaporate uh some don't think that i don't believe that either i believe that there's a purge. i believe that god always purifies by fire you know that even when you look at your own life how are we motivated by fire. See, we're motivated by heat. We're transformed by fire. Think about that in your own life. We get like a bump on the lock sometimes. We don't get moved. We don't want to do anything until the fire comes. Whoo, I'm going to get away from that. And then that's the way God starts to purify us and transform us. And see, I believe that's how the earth is going to be purified also in, in, uh, at one time. But this thing for our own lives where God brings us into the place of where we know him. Because as we're going to look at, God doesn't want one person to perish. Isn't that a wonderful, wonderful thing? Uh, the most hideous person you could ever think about. God loves them and he doesn't want them to perish. That's the wonderful, that's the God we serve. You see? God is not a man that he should lie. He's not like us where we take vengeance and where we, we take some type of attitude or we, we gauge things of, about how somebody did. Or done, you know, because if God had done that, we'd all be sunk. 
Because the Bible says we all fall short of God's glory. You know? So therefore, we really don't know how good grace is until you know how bad sin is. You know? So we see how bad sin is and God covers it. When you ask for forgiveness, praise the Lord, you start new and fresh. And then, uh, you know what the good news is? That Christ becomes your Lord and Savior, not only for this life, but for the life to come. That means eternal life. There's no, there's no ending to our life in the moment. Isn't that a wonderful thing? I mean, if you know Christ your Lord and Savior, the Bible says that we all have eternity planted in our hearts. But not all of us are going to have the same destination. All of us won't have the same residence. You see? As for me, I choose to trust Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Amen. I choose to believe what this says. Amen. Peter addresses those who don't believe this. He calls them scoffers. You know what a scoffer is? Somebody mocks what this says. You start to read it, and they start to mock it. Where is this coming? That's it. But I've been hearing this for ever since I was a child. The Lord's return. He's not coming. He calls them scholars. So let's read this. We don't want to be scoffers, right? I may not understand these things fully. But I'm not going to mock God in this word. And here's what it says. Beloved, I now write to you a second epistle, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of reminder, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts, and saying, Where is this promise of His coming? For since our fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Let's just pause there and pray. Father, as we look at this today, Lord God, I pray that uh, You will give us a greater understanding, and we'll thank You for that in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Now you're probably sitting there and, and trying to wonder where do I get the title of uh, global warming. Now uh, some of you, like me, I, I, uh, I get a little hesitant when I hear about these greenhouse gases and, and how our earth is warming up and uh, how we have to restrict this and restrict that uh, so that we don't destroy the earth. And that, that's contrary to what the Bible is saying. Maybe it isn't. Maybe the earth is getting a little warmer. And, and, but it's not getting warmer by greenhouse gases. It's getting warmer by the sins of humanity. That's why I think it's getting a little warmer. It's getting closer to that time where the earth is starting to heat. Right? Creation itself it is shaken and quaking. The scripture said, waiting for the sun of God to be revealed. You, you think about what, what <laughs> this is the way I think sometimes. What is greenhouse gas? And what, what is the poisonous gas? Is it, is it the, they say that sometimes it's, uh, you know, uh, over forestry, we kill too many trees, we, we cut them down, and uh, that's why we have all the recycling and so on. I wonder about all those that, that really pushed that agenda that have houses up in Aspen. They had to cut all those trees down to have their big, huge houses and their big fossil footprint to tell us that make sure you put your Coke bottle over here and make sure you put your other bottle over there. I, I just want to say that for a moment that sometimes there's nothing but hypocrisy in things. You see? Because when you really look at what greenhouse gases are the things of, uh, of uh, what the poison, do you know that we exhale poison, but God has made a, uh, we have been fearfully and wonderfully made, you know that? And that's why I wonder sometimes why, uh, 
don't know. I'm not going to go there. But I'll be intrigued. <laughs> it's not a good place to go this morning. Okay. <clears throat> so anyway, I believe that the world, yes, is warming up. I believe that we are getting near the time. And I believe that uh, what God said is true and uh, that every man would be a liar. And here's why I believe that why people scoff. They scoff because they haven't recognized or realized that there is a God or realized that there are miracles that transpire without the earth. Now, don't get me wrong, all of us have some type of doubts of some kind, right? Don't we all have some type of doubts of things don't we? That's why I encourage you to be in the Word of God, to stir up the gifts that are within you, so you be transformed, renewed in the mind daily. Uh, don't stay away from this for months long, edge, because you know what happens? We start doubting when we become scoffers. We may not say it with our mouth, but our actions go ahead and betray the way that we, we, we are living. Yeah. So you think about talking about scoffing at God's Word. Well, I've never seen anyone cross the Red Sea. Well, that really, right? I, I've never seen a man getting swallowed up by a fish. You know, so, so how can it be? So we start to throw these doubts in there. We start to throw, and we become scoffers ourselves. Just because I haven't seen it, my friends, doesn't mean that it's not true. And the only thing you and I have to rely on is the Word of God. And he is faithful. See, don't rely on CNN or, or Fox News or someone else to bring you truth. Only God can bring you truth. Amen. Because scoffers will come and say, well, where is this coming? As we as believers saying, get ready because Jesus is coming again. See, where is he? He's not coming again. Things have been going on like this forever. Tomorrow is going to be just like it is today. We might not have tomorrow, my friend. The Bible says we are but a mist. We're here today. We might even be gone tomorrow. Am I right with that? Am I right that we, you know how many funerals I've done this in this past year? I'm not even talking about the rapture of Jesus coming for his church. You may get hit by a bus tomorrow. Or you may walk out here and have a heart attack. Or you may just, you know... Uh, die of the natural cause, but we don't know the day or the hour when we could be taken from this earth. And friends, I don't want you to be separate from the life that God has for you. Just because you didn't believe this. You see, that, you know what keeps us out of heaven? Unbelief. Not your sin. You may be a murderer sitting here this morning. You might have done some heinous crimes and, uh, that are unspeakable. They can be forgiven. They will be forgiven if you ask Jesus Christ to forgive your sin. But what won't be forgiven is unbelief. You see? Unbelief and scoffing. What's that preacher talking about again? I'm just going to go back my way. See, I was that way at one time. I was that, and God proved Himself to me. Not that He needed to, but He proved Himself to me in His great mercy and His love. And it wasn't because He was going to pound me into the pavement. It was because of His great love when I was pounding myself into the pavement that He picked me up. And he put my foot. <coughs> And firm foundation, and he told me that I loved you with everlasting love. I've called you with loving kindness. Even though you are a wicked man, even though the things you have done, you, you're just in what my son has bore the sins of the world, and he bore your sins too, if you just believe and trust him. Man, it was like, whew, something I've been looking for all my life, for a new beginning, something that I wasn't going to be judged or condemned or, or looked down on. God said, I loved you with an everlasting I loved you this much. Amen. What a wonderful thing that was. What a day that was. Amen. And every day I continued to thank Him for that. I, I continued to thank Him. 
Because, friends, God's word is true. And this is what happens uh, when the end is getting near. Uh, and I, I, I take this passage of scripture out not to bring fear into your heart, my friends. Because we could be here another day. We could be here another week. Or we could be here another 10,000 years. Right? So, I'm not, when we look at the remainder of the scripture, don't get scared. God put it there. <laughs> he put it there for a reason for us. So that we would believe his word and not be the scoffers that say, where is this coming? So now, let me read the remainder now. And verse 4 it says, and he say, where is this promise of this coming from? Since uh, our fathers fell asleep, all things uh, continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willfully forget. Aren't we good at that? Willfully forgetting things? You know? Aren't we, uh, you know, sometimes we're, we willfully forget how good God has been to us. You know, uh, how many here has done foxhole prayers? Anyone? Anyone who's been in a jam and, and God was so good and he got you out. I like when I used to preach in the jail, a lot of guys would tell me, yeah, you know, there was foxhole prayers in the back of the police car. Oh, Lord, no, no more. And God would allow them out or give them some time just to return to their same way. Just to return. See, and I've done that numerous times. I just, I didn't know when the next time wouldn't be. And that's the, the problem. You see, we don't know the day or the hour. So let us not willfully reject God's goodness and his love over and over again. Of course, the, the next time uh, may not be the next time. You ever hear that? My, my mother used to tell me that. But listen to this. They willfully forgot that the word of God, the heavens were of old, the earth standing out of water and by water, by which uh, the world that existed perished, being flooded with water. What's he talking about? The days of Noah, right? We have the word of God made true, sure. We, we can look back. Isn't it a wonderful thing that we have the Word of God to look back that God has been true and faithful all through the centuries? Hallelujah. We don't know maybe what the future will hold for us unless, the, the, you know, uh, systematically we have an idea. We don't know perfectly, but we do have the past to stand on. Amen? And, and the historical past is such a blessing for us because every word that God had declared is right here and it transpired exactly the way he said. Now we say you want tomorrow's news, you look at it today right here. And God has given us what the forecast is coming. And he has given us the task for us to not make a mockery of his word. So he says this, by which the world that existed in perished. We know that, the flood, uh, eight and all. And then verse 7 says, the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word and reserved for fire until that day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. We all know, it's just, it's just, uh, uh, it, it, it's what the Bible declares that there, there's a time, there's a time going to come on judgment. I don't know when that time will be, but there will be a day of judgment. You see? And when we'll all stand uh, before the Lord, the Bible tells us that every mouth will confess, every knee will bow, that Jesus is Lord. Every so I say, why not do it right now? Why not confess Jesus now? Why not bow now before your Lord and Savior instead when we're forced to and then cast away? You see? And that's the day of judgment. It's a scary thing. And I'm not, again, not to, to, to point that out, but this is true, right? And he says, uh, but beloved, do not forget the one thing with the Lord. You see this in verse 9? A day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. 
What is that saying? What, what is that saying? You're, you're looking at a, a period of time where we think that uh, it should be today. But how many know that we could be here another week or another thousand years or another two thousand years? But why? Why would God allow this suffering to continue? Why? What, have you ever asked that question? When you look around and you see the evil that's present, you see good people being killed and destroyed, and you see in Ukraine and the people in the subway and these children, my heart goes out. Why, God, why, why don't you do something? And he answers it in the next verse. He answers it in the next verse. Verse 10. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. What is his promise? He's going to destroy evil. He's going to purge evil. That's his promise. He's going to do that. Why aren't you doing it, God? Hey, isn't that your heart sometimes? Uh, aren't you? Do you feel like, you know, hey, surely I've served God in vain. I'm, I'm trusting the Lord. And uh, the evil are there just, there, there seems to be uh, doing a little better than we are. But look what it says in verse 10. You have to look at this. It says this. Well, uh, uh, verse 9 again. The Lord is not slack concerning this promise. As some can count slackness, but it is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repent. I, I love that verse right there. I love that verse. God doesn't want one to perish, He's giving us opportunity. That's what it's saying. There's opportunity. To come now. But we don't know when the end will be. But he's given you opportunity. Come now. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the time. Not tomorrow. Because we don't know. What tomorrow is. And the misconception. I, I've had this myself. That, you know, I'm just not ready. Lord I remember. In, in, uh, uh, early 1981. I got in a bad car accident. My cousin came to me and said, and he's preaching the gospel to me, and I wasn't ready. I said, I'm just not ready. Man. I'm just not ready. I knew what he was saying. I've heard the gospel all my life. I just wasn't ready. And I was on death's door. I still wasn't ready. See, that's, that's, that's just something about, uh, you know, responding when it's time to respond because we become callous. You see? Now, I was hard-headed. I had to go uh, down pretty far. I always say this to others, you know, you think that you're at the bottom? There could be a trap door there, too. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> so please, let today be the day of your salvation. I say these things because the Word of God is telling us, right? God is not slack or slow concerning His promises of when He's going to revamp, He's going to purge the earth. Isn't that going to be a wonderful time and day that there's not going to be any more evil? Right? Isn't that wonderful? But on the flip side, if I was 25 years back or whatever, and God were to come, I'd be on the wrong side. And I'd be the one who would be cursed. So I'm not quick to say, Hallelujah, come on, Lord. Because there are many out there that aren't in. That are not in yet, friend. And that should grieve every one of us. And because it grieves this heart. God loves it. I do know. And he says in the next verse, 11 or 10. But the day the Lord will come as a thief in the night, <clears throat> which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, global warming, what matter of person ought you to be in a holy conduct and godliness, looking forward or looking for and hastening 
namely the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt in fervent heat. Nevertheless, look what it says, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth, which the righteous will dwell. That is our hope, that is our promise that we have. But I'm going to keep reading because we're going to close with this. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found in him in peace without spot and blameless. Do you hear what it says? Be diligent at these things. What, what are we being diligent at? In these things, not giving up meeting together, coming together, praying together, praying for each other, because you know we can be on the other side very quickly and start to doubt these things, start to become scoffers, start to say things that are contrary to what God says. Right? Be diligent in what we have here. And then he goes on to say this. Verse 17 and uh, 18 we'll close with. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, we've been warned, we've been taught, right? Since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness. Isn't it easy to become complacent sometimes? Isn't it easy at times to just uh, rely or rest on our own laurels? And many a time, things come in like a thief in the night. And we could use that application in many ways, and, and you could know it to be true. But this application, you know, is an imperative for us that we remain diligent and steadfastness. And I'll read the verse 17 again. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, Beware that at least you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the error of the wicked. But grow, but grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. To him be the glory for now and forevermore. Amen. But to grow in the grace and knowledge. See, when we're not re when you're not growing, what are you doing? You're receding. Right? There's no neutrality in that. There's no neutrality in, in that. If you're stagnant, you're receding. Friends, I'm, I'm here to tell you what Peter said to us. Those with a pure mind, I am stimulating your mind for wholesome thinking. That's what the scripture says. That's why if you would define verse 1, that's what it actually says. He's stimulating us to wholesome thinking, to think rightly. And I'd just like to close with this. We have the greatest gift given to us, right? God hasn't left us without testimony. Aren't we thankful that we can go to the Word of God and, and get built up and find strength in it? Aren't you glad that you have brothers and sisters in Christ? Because it's sometimes in our walk, we start to think differently. And that's why we need each other to encourage each other to be renewed in our minds. To love each other and to build each other up. Some have gone astray. Some have never made it. Let's dig our heels in in a way that we were going to trust the Lord. And knowing the days are short. You go back to the first book Peter wrote. By the way, he wrote them pretty closely together. And in 1 Peter 4, 7, he says, The end of th all things are near. The end of all things are near. So he said, be self-controlled and alert. And so we can pray. You heard Brother Eddie saying about prayer, how important that is to come together, be renewed, and, and pray. Because that is the only weapon we have for our warfare. That's the weapon we have. Maybe there's someone here this morning that's never trusted.
Christ as their Savior. Let today be that day. I'm not talking about you come and you, you join a church and you, you go through the motions and have no real devotion. God wants the devotion. He doesn't want just your motion. You see? So, I know God is speaking to someone's heart this morning. Whether it's on video, whether it's on the YouTube, I'm going to just take a moment we'll pray. So, Father, you know who you, call, you have been calling. And, Lord, uh, this has been good for us, Lord, to be refreshed. You said that uh, even though that we know these things, you, you gave them to remind us. So thank you for the reminder, Lord. Thank you for um, giving us a, a little joy. But I do pray for those who maybe have never trusted. Let the day uh, trust Jesus. Not what uh, they've done for themselves. Not what they have even performed in their acts of unrighteousness. But... Help them to trust what Jesus has done. And God, I do pray, Father, for those individuals, Lord, that might be trusting now, that you would secure their salvation, that they would know. Um, it's not about just what they'll feel. It's not about some feeling. It's about what your word declared. If they trust Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, the Bible says they are born again, and they belong to you, and they have an eternal home in heaven. So I pray, God, that they would do that. Yes, I trust you, Jesus. I am a sinner and I need saved. And if that's you, just let God know that. And I pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Do I get excited about this? Absolutely. Because this is eternal. 